Thank you, Vitaly Alexievich, for a very important report. The idea that low energy nuclear reactions occur in the Earth's interior and on other planets has been repeatedly discussed by members of our community. But since our knowledge in the field of geology is limited, it remained at the level of general discussion, general reasoning. And now two professional geologists have published an article. Uh, but I will not touch on uh, earthquakes and eruptions, volcanoes. What is important for us is that in these articles and in Vitaly Alexevich's report, it is convincingly proven that low energy nuclear reactions are the only possible energy source that allows compensating for the difference between the observed heat flow of the Earth and the total power of other known processes in the Earth's interior. It is substantiated that the formation of the Earth's elemental composition is significantly linked to low energy nuclear reactions. And the appearance of heavy elements such as rare earths, noble metals, thorium and uranium cannot be associated with supernova explosions, but occurs in the Earth's interior, for example, in volcanic processes. But how this happens and why the conditions in the Earth's interior are favorable for low energy nuclear reactions is not explained in the article and today's report. Much becomes clear if we turn to the hypothesis I presented at our last conference. The essence of this hypothesis is as follows. In hot matter, especially in matter containing many free electrons, as a result of collisions of electrons with atoms and ions, neutrino-antineutrino pairs are formed with energies below or around one electron volt. Low energy nuclear transformations are the work of weak nuclear interactions in which neutrinos and electrons are involved in addition to nuclei. The process can affect not just one atom, but several atoms. This is because at sufficiently low energies, neutrinos interact with not just one nucleus and not even one atom, but many atoms. For example, in Vachayev's reactor, Iron was obtained from pure water. This could occur by combining three water molecules, that is six hydrogen atoms and three oxygen atoms, as well as four electrons. And if electrons participate in the nuclear process, the involvement of neutrinos is also mandatory. At first glance, the combination of several spatially separated particles in the presence of Coulomb barriers is absolutely unbelievable. But the fact that Lennar is a multi-atom process is evidenced by many experiments. This was first pointed out by Rudskoyev. Incredible, but it's a fact. It must be acknowledged that the weak interaction has such an amazing property to acknowledge, at least for now, even without explaining the mechanisms. The multi-atomic nature of Lennar is extremely important. It makes it possible to explain the enormous variety of resulting nuclides. Computer calculations showed, for example, that from various combinations of two, out of 293 known stable nuclides, around 1 million other combinations of nuclides can form exothermically, and much more if three or more nuclides are involved in the interaction. Exothermic reactions can occur spontaneously. The only hindrance is the Coulomb barriers. Weak nuclear interaction removes this restriction and allows these possibilities to be realized, albeit with a small probability. The iron nickel core of the Earth has a temperature of about 6,000 degrees, which means the average energy of particles is about half an electron volt. These are ideal conditions for generating neutrino-antineutrino pairs, which carry out nuclear transformations both in the Earth's core and in the mantle. Favorable conditions for nuclear transmutations also exist in magma and volcanic lava at temperatures above 1000 degrees. The fundamental possibility of forming elements lighter than iron and nickel from lighter elements is understandable even from the perspective of the law of energy conservation.
but the formation of elements heavier than iron and nickel, the XLEMR process at first glance seems impossible. For example, the formation of four atoms of nickel, such as combining four atoms of nickel and 22 electrons yields thorium-232. But to make this happen, it is necessary to add 265 mega electron volts. The process of forming heavy elements becomes exothermic when combining a large number of sufficiently light elements. For example, the combination of 17 nitrogen atoms and 27 electrons produces uranium-238 with a release of energy of 18 mega electron volts. Such a process can already proceed spontaneously in the presence of low energy neutrinos. Even more exothermic are reactions involving hydrogen. For example, the same uranium-238 can be obtained by combining 19 carbon atoms, 10 hydrogen atoms, and 32 electrons. Here, the energy release is 35,000 mega electron volts. Well, look, so if we try to approach to obtain heavy elements by sequentially adding mass, for example, from there, from lithium or boron, aluminum, from aluminum, that is to obtain iron. But beyond iron, we won't go further. But if we immediately gather a lot of light elements, and when they, they can already combine with the release of energy, that is, this reaction can spontaneously give, that is, so heavy elements. Thus, perhaps heavy elements may form from light elements rather than from elements like iron or heavier ones. Well, in conclusion, it can be said that from the perspective of our hypothesis, favorable conditions indeed exist in the Earth's interior for the occurrence of cold nuclear transformations. Not only is there an explanation for the formation of nuclides lighter than iron, but also for heavy elements, up to transuranic elements. All this is possible as a result of weak nuclear interactions, covering several atoms at once. Such multi-atomity is definitely needed. Well, thank you. That's all I wanted to say.